Is it? Tomorrow. It's Wednesday, Wednesday morning, Wednesday morning and it's going to get bad by the evening yeah, commute. One, 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 so oh, one, not like overnight. Like during no, the day. No, during the day. All rise. <laughs> <laughs> you got to pay off your bet. I did it fair off. Well, I guess I'm too no, late. My contribution, let's just clear everyone in the room. You <laughs> <laughs> get Wi Fi. What's up with that? Good. We'll do the claim first because I'm sorry, what? When we get to the we'll do the claim first because there's only one claim. There's a bunch of houses. I mean, and Rachel's here all day anyway, so it's not yeah, like I need she's Kelly coming for that. I think she is coming, yeah. So if she's coming, we'll say it's Well, I used to be, but now. Closing, but um, she normally does come. It's going to be public Wi-Fi. Well, I'm trying the other one, too, and it just yeah, won't. Yeah. We'll pick it up. I couldn't get on last time either. It might be down. I'm, I'm losing my wireless phone. I don't know why I don't, I don't pick up this pass, shared no, network no, anymore, I used to be on it. You have direct TV? You don't have direct TV, do you? Oh, my, my sister yeah. had no TV for the football game last yes, night. Yes, oh, I was just telling everybody so that. The she last four so minutes, man. She was the last half. It went out yeah. third quarter. No she way. Had, she had watched the end of it and her laptop. My antenna didn't fail me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I had no problem. I had it on all TV. I had it on my phone, my little radio, like the old days. When I used to listen to the World Series in the, in the school. Yeah. Our little headphones, our little made it, it made it special. So it did. Is, is it we used to hide the radio so the teacher would catch us. Always had one or two teachers. <laughs> yeah, let us do it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right now. There you go. All right. Oh, Johnny is there. You go, my friend. He is here. Yeah, keep it up. I'm restarting. Or just can we start? Can we start? Yeah, John's here, right? You bitch. Uh, yeah, we can. Sure. What's that? We had to work today. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. We're going to get going. I texted you. All right. We're going to move to the top. We're going to move to the top. We're going to move to the top. Absolutely. All right. Talk about it. You know, try to. Okay, I want to bring um, city planning and development um, to order. And the first item up is the uh, clock powered lighting. and. Mr. Wallen? Sure. Yeah, she has the microphone. We didn't pass half out that way. There you go. I don't know if I have enough uh, color. Well, I just wanted to pass it out just to give you guys a visual. Um, so that is a mock-up of what was done about two months ago on the roof of City Hall. Um, the idea is right now we have existing uh, incandescent spotlights that were put up with a clock tower burn, and I believe uh, 1983, I believe when it was. Uh, I have it in here. 1983. So those lights have been existing in 1983. They just use a giant light bulb. They're like old style vaudeville stage lighting. Um, if you've seen up there, uh, we do not get good light uh, spread on them. They're a little dull. We, uh, we do get requests to light for several events. We've gotten requests for domestic violence. We've gotten requests for breast cancer. We've gotten requests for holidays. We've gotten requests for leukemia, things like that to light. And we try to accommodate everyone, but we do it via cutting cellophane in a six inch by six inch, sliding in the front of the light. If it's windy, they blow off. If there's issues. They also, for some reason, whatever color we put up there ends up looking pink. <laughs> Every color looks pink. <laughs> but it's just the washout. So uh, as we're upgrading our exterior lighting to LEDs and our interior lighting to LEDs more energy efficient, uh, we thought now would be a good time uh, to follow the parking garage, which has already been upgraded to similar LEDs, the State Street Bridge, which Metroplex is upgrading with similar color LEDs to, you know, really address the clock tower. Um, now this is just a mock-up. Uh, we'd actually be able to do several color combinations different than that, every side, every head is programmable. Um, and our maintenance costs would go down. Our operations right now, we do set people up on the roof when it is. Um, like I stated in here, we cannot change the light on the peak. That light's always just white. There's no way to change that. So the front of the clock tower, regardless of what we do, is white because it's just too dangerous to plug and it's too expensive to keep running the lift every time we change it. So we, we leave that one white. Um, so this is just uh, another, another improvement uh, for the city. 
We did, uh, we have ME Engineering uh, who did our our design. They are the same that did the parking garage and the same that has done the bridge. They are a lighting, a specialty lighting design company. We have uh, received at least five, six bids. Um, the lowest being out of McBain, out of Troy. Uh, and we do have the money for this set up code for improvements to the city. Questions? What's your, uh, what's your time frame on this? That is one of the things we're working on with them. Uh, with the fixtures, the fixtures are pretty common. I think we're thinking around two to three months of time for them. Probably be ready for the spring. I don't know if we want them up there in the winter. There's kind of a lot of work up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But for us to wait until the weather breaks, if possible. The other thing is uh, we got a decent price uh, prices. We are looking at actually awarding um, the plus LEDs behind the clock face, which is kind of a neat thing. Uh, they think it's part of this is the they're going to allow us to they're going to program us 50 lighting programs. So we'll give them some of the basics and we'll give them some, some interesting ones. So right now we have just white incandescent white bulb behind the clock face. Uh, this would you know for the uh, for the price you see here, replace them with the linear lights that you see that are color changing like that. Mm -hmm. And so we can do kind of you know the clock face we blue when the whole tower is white and kind of give ourselves some more interesting options. And then uh, I really think it's going to be a focal point once we're done with it because you can see the clock tower. You kind of ignore it sometimes. You know you walk past it and you just walk past it. And when you light it up, especially <laughs> on the ground, we took some of these you know where we were doing this, we have people on the ground. It really stands out when you hit it with this kind of intense color. And uh, I, I think it'll bring some some pizzazz over this side because you know a lot of these on stage. You know, we got to start bringing some of it this way, some over to Union. That's great. Questions? Yeah, just one other comment. I saw you on Facebook there live with the... Uh, oh, more, you know, more lighting. If, yeah, can you just quick rules we'll talk about that? Just give a little overview of what you guys are doing with the testing. All right. so, so that is similar. That was a mock-up for the Amtrak Bridge over Erie Boulevard. Yeah. So a side project that we're working on um, is to light that bridge as kind of a modern art, similar to this, but different. Um, we have a tentative agreement with Amtrak. I have a tentative agreement with DOT, and uh, we're looking to do the work and have it installed, hopefully in, for, uh, in combination with the opening of the rail station. So uh, it's one of those things where uh, we've been talking about, you know, one of the governor's initiatives, <coughs> lighting railroad bridges and kind of making these things up. Uh, that bridge is kind of what we've been talking about, embrace your blight. Mm -hmm. So people look at that bridge and they think it's ugly, but really when you light it in the right way, it's looks cool. fantastic looking. It's yeah. really yeah. an amazing bridge. They'll never make a bridge like that again. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's exquisitely wide. It was meant to carry four trains at one time. It's just huge. Oh, wow. It has lattice on it. And if we do it right and we light it the right way, um, it should make a really visual impact on, on the core. We're also hoping, uh, that it's going to what we call tying the barbells. So, you know, we're calling the city to the barbell. And uh, we have Mohawk Harbor on one end, you have the downtown on the other, and then you have Erie Boulevard. With that being in the middle, we're hoping that it will kind of be that common beacon oh, yeah. that you can kind of, you know, that, that you can use as a focal point in between. So it's tentative. I mean, we still, uh, big steps having DOT and Amtrak on board, but nothing is 100% signed and sealed yet, but they wanted to see final plans before they would sign off, and you cannot have final plans without the mock. So we're running things parallel right now, and hopefully that's going to mean that, that we get it done in time for October 1st. That's when the goal is for train the train station. And then, you know, the governor should be at the train station opening, so try to have everything ready for it. Well, thank you for all your work and your staff as well. It's excellent stuff. And uh, again, we got the lights under the bridge that yep. is also out there, so that's going to be a huge thing. Erie, front, green, all of those are going to be lit, so the entire downtown corridor is going to be very nice. A lot more walkable. Very good. Very good. All right. Any other questions? I'll move it. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, next is the review of the environmental significance of the city builders project and its development. So please present. It's just a reminder that the public hearing is coming up and it okay. needs to be done prior to the public hearing. It's just uh, the reviews Place are holders. just there as ticklers okay. in advance of the public hearing. Right, so no action needed. Okay. 
I just, I just want the date says two five public hearing, but pardon. The date says February fifth. Oh, I did no, and I did, and I made the mistake in public safety too. No, next week twelve. I thought it was yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the final review of Energize New York. So we'll go over and. Rachel. Yes. Um, we just have a, a few small changes to make to this. I believe. I don't know what Alex. Yeah, there's just a couple minor uh, formatting edits that need to be made. Nothing of substance to the law itself. Uh, if you look on the resolution, 2017 needs to be changed to 2018. And then the blanks obviously need to be filled in with the uh, city of Schenectady. And then if you look at the local law the next page, the title says to establish. It needs to match the title of the resolution that said, which says uh, to improve and strike. Minor, minor edits. We just want to make you aware before we pass the final version next week. Okay. Yes. And this is just for commercial buildings, right? This isn't residential Correct. buildings. Correct. Any other questions? Okay. Um. We have uh, next up is a uh, ceremonial uh, motion. I'm sorry. <laughs> a second. All those in favor? Aye. Passed. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, next up is the uh, ceremonial resolution for uh, National Boy Scouts Day. Yes, uh, I received a phone call from Mr. Thomas Waters, who's a uh, one of our leaders at a local uh, uh, Boy Scout troop at uh, Woodlawn Elementary School, mm -hmm. and I'm um, actually going to speak to their troop uh, Thursday evening. And I just realized that uh, Monday is actually, or the month of February, is uh, National Boy Scouts uh, Month. So we want to do a resolution to honor this troop and uh, 25 men uh, that are, are there, and young men, uh, and uh, some moms that are actually troop leaders as well, which is really neat. So uh, they've done some great work in the community, and just thought it would be a nice way to have them come down. They're going to focus on the force as well, and uh, lead us in the pledge. Can I come with it? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, I believe we need to recess. Motion to recess. Second. Uh, you, is the property sale report in executive session? Yes. Okay. I'm okay. doing it, yeah. Can I please get a reason why you're going into executive session? We're no, going we're not in. going into, re we're recessing because of the sale of the um, properties. That's ex that's an executive session. So we're recessing planning and development and, so, and just moving on to the next committee. Finance. Yes. Why? Why is that an executive session? We always to start with done an executive session because it has some information with the buyer and, and if there's pending litigation issues like that with the stuff that's pending. Sometimes there's stuff that's made over close and other litigation kind of thing. Okay. okay. Did you get your motion? Yes. Second. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Recess. Call the order of the Finance Committee. The item on the agenda is the CSA, CSEA contract approval. Um, Mr. Ferrari, I guess, uh, basically, we'll go over the 2% raise. Absolutely. Thank you. As you know, the CSEA contract ended December of 2016. Uh, the administration uh, worked uh, with CSA for the whole year of 2017 to finally uh, uh, finalize the uh, contract. Uh, uh, CSA, uh, they settled with 2%, uh, 17, 18, and 19. Uh, there was an increase in their longevity uh, amounts and uh, of their food allowance. Uh, the contract goes through 2019, and uh, uh, we can probably come back to you to uh, talk to you about the retro payment for 2017. That's uh, going to be happening uh, if this gets approved. Any questions? Seeing none, I have a motion. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, motion to adjourn. Seven. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. All right, I'll call to order government operations. And this is a discussion for the time limit for public hearing comment. Mr. Riggie? Yes, I do. The speaker brought it to our attention last week about extending time limits for public hearings and I think the legislative agenda. I'm not so much on board the legislative agenda, but I think there's times for public hearings, especially some of them are pretty important where I think 
it would be uh, prudent for us to listen to whatever they have to say in public hearings. So um, we went through this before, and I, I know uh, years ago we extended the privilege of the floor. It didn't last long because a couple of people got out of hand general privilege of the floor. But I would like to see this with the caveat that it's still at the discretion of the chair to limit it. So I would say between three and a maximum of five minutes. But if somebody's bringing across some good points, and I think that happened at the last meeting, um, because that lady couldn't make the presentation because it was snowing, that I had to give her extra time. And I don't think five minutes is too long for public hearings, because they usually, for, for important uh, items, and that's why there's a public hearing. Now. So I would like to see us at least as a pilot to maybe move that to five minutes, a maximum of five minutes, at the discretion of the chair. If there's a lot of redundancy and people are saying the same thing, then, uh, you know, that would be up to the chair after three minutes. So I'd like to see us try that as a pilot and see how it works. Comments? So the only challenge I have with that is if we have a um, robust meeting and we're allowing people to go on for five minutes in a 10 minute time frame instead of us getting through three people, we're only gonna get through two people. So there could be a certain amount of discouraged individuals that may want not want to stay. And for, I just would want us to be conscious of that where you know, people's time, the fact that everyone wants to be able to speak. And, you know, we have two people in a five minute, in a 10 minute time frame you know, meeting. Uh, there could be people getting discouraged and not want to hang around and actually speak. So. <laughs> See, it's <laughs> not just me that ignores you, Mary. I understand what you're saying. It's sometimes people leave now at the three minute, um, at the three minute mark, is they're like, oh, this is too long. But um, with, with the public hearing, generally speaking, we don't see, it unless it's like TVPG, we don't see a huge number of people coming out to speak. So, um, I mean, if we can't get to five, maybe we can just drop in the middle and be at four. But the one thing that I would say is, though, I don't think that um, that we should be able, the chair should be able to say that you said the same thing as the last person, so therefore we're going to stop you here because people would, you know, they take issue with that, and certainly I can't blame them. So I don't know that um, having the chair have the discretion of saying, well, that's what you know the guy before you said, so stop right there. So I think it's a good idea to extend the time frame, but we extend it, we extend it with. Whoever, however long the, the extension is, people can speak to that point up until that time frame. So I agree with that. Mr. Uh, I think we have to consider a technical issue uh, with the technology. We have a timer that probably <laughs> won't allow <laughs> for a four minute piece in one area and a three minute piece yeah, in another. You can set that. Can you? Yes. Okay, because I wasn't, because sometimes that thing doesn't work. Very well. well that's your <laughs> that's, we'll come to that, but you are fast enough. It can, it can so I, I just thought maybe from a technical perspective it might cause an issue. So, but apparently not. Yeah, that works. Yes. I mean, uh, I don't have a problem. I mean, I'm up in a minute or two, you know, public hearing. So far, I don't need to I mean, not a lot of people do attend these things. So, I'm in favor of, of adding a few. Um, I have no problem trying it. You know, I mean, I don't think we have to change it forever, right? If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. I do agree that sometimes the, I mean, I, I, I understand respecting everybody's time, but we're also, our main job is to listen to the public, right? So, and we want people to be able to make their, in public hearings generally are around very important pieces of legislation. So, um, you know, I think to try it and see what we think. I I anticipate people not using the whole time because they're more accustomed to the three minutes when they need it. They need it. I, I don't think it's warranted for the legislative agenda or privilege of the floor, but for public hearings. And I agree with you as, as well. I'd like to you know, do it on a trial basis, but I think the most important thing is making sure the speakers are on the top. Uh, whatever the public hearing is designated for when they're speaking, that's your job. and that would be the <laughs> job of the chair, that'd be correct, to make sure that that is what they are talking about, not something off the issue of the public hearing, and I have no problem uh, doing that. Uh, again, I think it's important, I mean, really the CBG and really our budget uh, are the only two times that I can really, probably we've had a lot of folks up, uh, to try to 
to speak. Um, Casino. Well, that's yeah, not going to be having this today at my golf ladder, too, man. That's, that's, right. Right. that's right. I'll never forget that one. We were over three hours. That's, that was a long one. Uh, but, you know, some of that extent. Uh, and again, to try it on a trial basis, uh, I think it'd be fine. Again, with the chair, whoever he or she may be beyond myself, uh, to make sure that they that speakers stay on the top. Call for. Mr. Powell, any general comments? Just a suggestion that, given Ms. Porterfield's comments, um, do, and Mr. Reggie's comments, try it on a trial basis for four minutes. Um, people can contact us by phone or email or letter. They do all the time anyway. So uh, that might be a, a nice compromise to move forward and see how it goes. Legally, I don't know that, I mean, do we need to vote? Do we need to vote on it or is it? Well, if we're doing a pilot, we should set a timeline and make some sort of resolution. Like, not a... Yeah. Right. Two or six months? Six months trial? Is that right? Mm, three or months. About a month. Three months. Three months. Well, the general privilege is going to last a call. Frank Perez, you'll find out about three months. Okay, so a month. Yeah, I, we can always extend it. Yeah. I mean, why not? Why I mean, get into two meetings? Only two meetings, two meetings right? right. right. Yeah. So well, we might not even have a public so. hearing. All right, like some public yeah. hearings, right? right. So yeah. Two or three yeah. months. Yeah. Four yeah. public hearings, maybe try four public yeah. hearings. Yeah. I said, let's do it to include the CDBG piece. Okay. Well, what is CDBG, May? Well, well we can always extend it if it works yeah. well, yeah. right? So, how about two months or four public hearings? Whichever comes first. Right. Oh, whatever. Um, Mr. Poge's point about CDBG, um, I think we should try to get that in, included because that's yeah. a good, yes. that's a good barometer. Yes. That's when one of those times when a lot of people come out. So whatever that time frame is. I think it's May, isn't it? When is the public April, hearing? April, 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 May. That's what I'm thinking, right? <laughs> to include the CBG. Well, whatever you guys want. Yep. I, think, I think it's a good opportunity, again, just to hear our residents. Uh, I don't you know, really personally don't think, except for when there's a lot of speakers, it's going to be a big issue. Right. Many times I only have one or two speakers. For and that's what we're checking out a look at. We very rarely do we have more than one or two. Exactly. Okay, so I will ask for a motion to increase the time limit on public hearing uh, commentary to four minutes. Until we get through the CDBG public okay. hearing. Do you have a motion? Okay. Moved by Mr. Rigney, seconded by Ms. Porterfield. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there anything else to come before government operations this evening? Yes, Ms. Brazo. Yes. Uh, on, on the topic of, of uh, conversation, I just want to remind everybody we're going to be doing our coffee with the council uh, that begins this uh, Sunday over at Proctor's. So we're going to have uh, every second Sunday of the month, we're going to be having a uh, coffee with the council at the Schenectady mm -hmm. Green Market. Uh, it's going to be from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. Um, we are going to be set up near the Proctor's box office, uh, in between the rest area area and the Proctor's box office. The areas that will be in that uh, general vicinity. But it's going to be uh, consistent. We're going to do that every second Sunday of the month. Um, and please, uh, the council members, just let me know who's going to be able to attend. Uh, you don't have to stay for the entire three hours for a half hour, four minutes, please do that. Um, we are going to partner with one of the local coffee vendors at the Green Market uh, to offer a little coupon or a ticket that uh, Erica is going to make for us from the Green Market. Uh, again, have a cup of coffee on us and, and just come and talk with us. Uh, let us hear your concerns. What are you looking for? Talk about the programs we have to offer, um, whatever initiatives that we're looking at. Uh, and again, uh, just an open and transparency uh, that we can present to our constituents. Uh, and again, the Green Market is well known for having some great tournaments there. They do an excellent job. I know Ms. Browse is there quite often as a cashier and working there uh, as a volunteer. Uh, and then we're going to continue it throughout the whole year, though, even when they move to the outside here, um, outside here at City Hall. I think it's important. We have a table, we have some chairs, we do have a banner as well that says Scott to City Council on it. Uh, and again, we're going to look for some brochures. We're going to have a little stand with all kinds of information that uh, folks can grab from us. And again, just think it's a good way for us to meet our constituents. Um, and again, a lot of folks who don't even reside in the city also uh, frequently the market, but I think it's just a good way for us to be there and have a presence. Uh, I talked with the mayor as well. There's going to be times we're going to invite uh, different department heads, uh, code enforcement, you know, police, fire, the mayor himself, 
uh, and we're going to do press releases on a regular basis the week prior to uh, to put in the community notes to let folks know uh, that we're going to be there between those hours and who the mayor might be there between noon and one o'clock. Um, but I just think it's a good way of getting out there. Again, Ms. Riley, we talked about last year, and unfortunately, we just never got together. I never got together, but I think it's a good opportunity for us to be out there uh, in the public and talk with folks. Okay, so anything else to come before government operations? Motion to adjourn. Second. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Call to order public safety. Uh, first item is a taxi ordinance. Uh, we need to Yes. yes, so we met with uh, Lauren Bailey from CBTA to discuss um, some of the concerns of the uh, taxi company owners. Um, their main concern, one of their main concerns were was the, the limit of seven years on the cars. Um, and she was very open to going back to the other municipalities to talk to them about increasing that to 10 years. So that is in the works. Um, another concern was the rates. And um, she's also willing to carry their voice back to the other municipalities on make, possibly making some amendments to the rates uh, to align with what was in place prior to. Um, so that's in the works. Um, I think an important thing to know about this legislation is First, we pass the legislation, but all the nuts and bolts come through in an MOU that we have to agree to later on down the line. So as we pass this legislation, and her recommendation is that we wait until the adjustments are made and we make, you know, accept the legislation after everybody else has agreed to changes, um, we will still be talking about what it's going to cost the city uh, how the nuts and bolts of it are going to work, uh, who's going to be responsible for what, those types of things. So uh, before they can come to agreement on those things, they need to get the legislation actually through. So I thought that was a very important point. I think it's also important to note that it has changed drastically since our initial conversations with CBTA. Um, CBTA will not be doing any of the inspection of the cabs. CDTA will not be doing any driver training customer service wise. Uh, it's really strictly an administrative role um, where they'll be doing the licensing and um, the permitting and things of that nature. Uh, and also they will be a centralized location for complaints um, so that all the cabs will have, you know, the the complaints in the cab. Um, still, part of that MOU is also the universal medallion. They haven't worked out the details on the universal medallion. So, even though we, even if we choose to pass this legislation, we will still have input on the universal medallion, and we don't have to necessarily agree to the MOU. It, it gives us another opportunity to weigh in on where they're, what direction they're going with it. And I think that's really important because that was another concern of our taxi drivers. Uh, was not being able to once if we accept the universal medallion we then cannot cap the number of cabs that we have in the city or anything else cdta will drive that fully uh, so there's still things to discuss still things for us to consider uh, but right now we're waiting on cdta to come back to us with regard to the changes um, so I, I believe it will we'll just table this until um, that occurs. Uh, the other the other uh, conversation part of the conversation was around timing. Um, and you know, because if our year runs differently than their year, our year runs March to April, their year runs December to December. So she said once the legislation is passed, she would recommend people taking their insurances out only through December, because then they'll have to renew within the CDTA requirements. So it's really good conversation. Um, and, you know, they're very open to our concerns. They certainly recognize the fact that a significant number of taxi cab owners stepped up to voice their concerns. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll, I guess, stay tuned. Yeah, and again, to piggyback off of that, um, CTA was very uh, pleased that we reached out to speak with them as well. And I think that's uh, important that they're willing to sit down, still have a dialogue uh, with us. Um, 
I mean, Town of Colony, for instance, uh, doesn't have any legislation uh, for, regarding taxi cab ordinances. I was completely surprised. Uh, with the number of hotels and shopping centers and everything else that they have, there is there is no regulation in the Town of Colony at all. Right. Nothing. Nothing. Uh, so uh, it's going to take some time for the Town of Colony to come out because there's obviously going to be some, some funding uh, that's going to be required of them. Uh, but again, well over, what, three quarters of this legislation comes from the city of Schenectady. I believe, what, isn't that what she said? I mean, yeah, the majority of this enough. came from us. Uh, I think so one of the speakers mentioned that, that we're... Yeah, so we're certainly the leader in this, and, I, and I, <coughs> you know, we are very proud of that, the fact that uh, CDTA is, is looking to use us as the model. Uh, but again, uh, you know, meeting with the taxi cab owners, I think, was, was the right thing to do. Uh, you know, sitting down with them, because uh, again, they're all small business, and we want the small business uh, to stay here in Schenectady. Uh, to hear their legitimate uh, concerns, and uh, I think that's what we're doing by meeting with them. So I thank you know Lisa and again CTA for meeting with us and keep the dialogue open, um, and we'll continue to move forward. On this. So we're going to hold this for definitely at this point until we hear from, yeah. until yeah. We hear from CTA. Okay. All right. I just got a question because I think maybe Mr. Gibbs brought it up about the elephant in the room, which is true. We have Uber and Lyft, which are providing the same service, but they, there's no control over them. I mean, I don't think we can do anything about that, but it is a pretty good uh, point that's made. They can operate without any controls at all, and these other companies that are no, cap really. companies have, have our control. So yeah. just maybe at some point that will change. I don't know. Okay, item number two. I think we're going to bring this back on the back. on two weeks, yeah, just okay. because I haven't had a chance to talk with him about it, and I know he received the letter, but I don't have the background on. All right, so we'll hold this. I'll bring it back in two weeks. And the next item is a review employee background check, and this is for the public hearing on the twelfth. Okay. So here's our first test. We have two public hearings. Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a pilot. It's a pilot, yeah. All right. We have a motion to uh, come over. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Uh, call to order claims. And I'm assuming. Hold on. Put it on. Put it on. We didn't ask for anything else, maybe. Yeah, oh. There. Anything else come for public safety? You had something? <laughs> <laughs> I reset my call to order. <laughs> Rewind the tape. Yeah. So this is with regard to the mudslide that um, that happened. There's um, it's actually a fundraiser that's being specifically for the, the group of people that were affected by that. The Community Crisis Network is going to be doing that, um, which is through run through SCAP, but it's a group of people that are part of the Community Crisis Network. And uh, Sikkim is actually going to be doing the major announcement tomorrow at their Sikkim assembly. And then, so um, I should get an email or fly or something that I'll share with all of you. But so the fundraiser is going to be specifically for that people. It's going to be, you know, managed and they'll find out what their needs are and then help them through that process. Um, as I understand it, some people have already contacted the city because whatever help they were getting um, was just a small amount of help for a few days. And now they're asking where, you know, what assistance they might not get beyond that. So there is a fundraiser that's underway. I should say that this um, actually was a suggestion that was at 12309 Neighborhood Association meeting last week, and that's where the suggestion came out of. So um, they've started to move ahead on that. So I think it's, it's great that the community is supporting people who are, you know, in this particular crisis. Did you mention the date? It's a, fu it's a fundraiser. So when? So, well, tomorrow they will, oh, they will announce okay. what, uh, you know, where you can give and how you can give and all that. So I'll, I'll forward that information to you because I get it. Thank you. Gotcha. Good. So let me just be clear, though. I don't think it's going to be a fundraising event. It's going to be more like a fundraiser so you can donate money. Online, kind of, you know, thing. Okay. Right. Go fund me, page. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Something. Yeah. yeah. All right. Motion to the Can I have a second? second. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Thank you. Okay. Call to order claim. There you go, Mr. Riggie. You got it now. <laughs> We will discuss it. We'll take the claims first and then we'll go back. Sure. Uh, yeah. Executive session, yes, yes. it is. 
Motion to go into executive session. Yes. So, so we have a, you guys got a stage.